Uh, first off, I want to like to hear a little bit about the origin story of Archeo Network. Um, and I think Michael and John, maybe M Michael, you can start. Like, sure. what's the original motivation of building Archeo? And maybe you can also share a little bit of the backstory with Shapeshift, where it comes from, and on-chain proposals and all these kind of things. Yeah, I. Um, uh, in order to understand the origin of Archeo, you need to understand the genesis of Shapeshift. Um, uh, John, do you want to um, talk us through Shapeshift, and then I'll pick it up uh, with the Ar uh, the genesis of Archeo following Shapeshift. Sure. I mean, so yeah, the Shapeshift uh, goes back to 2014 um, when myself and Eric Voorhees uh, launched it. Um, and the whole idea of Shapeshift was to create a non-custodial digital asset exchange. So, you know, we, this was way before the time of DEXs. It was before any of that existed. It was kind of the first way that you could just swap one asset to another with uh, your wallet directly without ever giving up custody or only giving it up for, you know, a few seconds. Um, and a lot of that came out of the the story of Mt. Gox and everything that happened there. And that was one of our big motivations of like, hey, let's let's create a system by design where this can't happen, where customers cannot lose funds because they're not being held in this way. And the whole idea was how do we actually use blockchain technology in such a way that we can actually um, decentralize and disintermediate this trust entirely. Um, fast forward, you know, through many, many years, you know, to a few years, you know, a few years ago and Shapeshift decided to decentralize into a DAO uh, in the summer of 2021. So about a year and a half ago now. Um, and as part of that, one of the things we were trying to figure out is like, okay, we're going to decentralize the front end. We're going to, we're going to decentralize this whole stack. We're going to decentralize the DAO, but how do we decentralize all parts of this stack? And that's kind of what led to the discussions uh, led to Archeo. I'll let Michael take that. Yeah. So um, we knew that we were decentralizing everything. We open source all of Shapeshift's code. We started laying off staff and we set up the DAO structure with the world's largest airdrop at the time of the Fox token, the governance token for the Shapeshift DAO. And we had plans for decentralizing the front end using technologies like IPFS. We had plans for decentralizing the governance using our Fox token. But when it came to the back end, we were still using a centralized AWS infrastructure. And I knew that we needed to solve this somehow. Um, this kept on gnawing at me um, and trying to figure out a way to decentralize this. We had reviewed a, a, a few different projects that purported to decentralize uh, backends. We had reviewed a cache and unfortunately it wouldn't work for what we were hoping to achieve at, uh, at Shapeshift. We reviewed the pocket network and that also um, wouldn't help us achieve the goals that, that we had at Shapeshift. So we needed something else. And um, it was actually on, um, on a walk alongside uh, John and Eric um, from Shapeshift that the idea started forming in my head and the, the, the technical I, uh, implementation of how to build a, uh, a decentralized marketplace where uh, anyone can provide data host services. Anyone else can uh, find a data host to, to start to consume um, these services that Archeo started to come into place. It was originally called FoxChain as a pr just a temporary project name. Um, and the FoxChain project over the, the course of the next year, it was really fleshed out. A lot of documentation was, was written to architect the thing. And um, while gathering a lot of input from a lot of very smart people who have built very decentralized projects. Uh, one of them um, that is very near and dear to my heart, Thorchain, I had the privilege of bouncing this idea off of Chad. And he, he, he seemed to love it. He's like, this is something that the world needs. Um, Chad, did I miss anything? No, I mean, not really. I think um, the problem that I, that I have with the industry as a whole right is that we're not as decentralized as we feel that we are, right? So projects like um, Ave and Compound, great projects in themselves, 
And the smart contracts themselves are very much not centralized, but the rest of the stack is highly centralized. And that's the problem, right? Even SPF himself, a week before he was basically collapsed, was talking about censoring UIs or adding KYC to UIs and this kind of thing. And so in order for us to get away from that, to allow the full and complete stack of all of our most near and dear projects in the space to become fully decentralized, we need to figure out other things outside of the chain itself, right? And so that's one of the part components of what Arco is trying to accomplish. Yeah.